Alexis Lund, thank you so much for being with us today. It's a pleasure. <laughs> it's a pleasure. So you've worked extensively with teens and young adults in Scandinavia, and you are best known for your work supporting those who have experienced addiction to pornography. If you were to compare teens where they are now compared to five to ten years ago, what would you say is the difference? Oh, more confusion. Um, the 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 value of what am I worth? Uh, am I worth more than my sexuality? Mm -hmm. uh, the social media drive, uh, the violence, uh, and the desperate, desperate need to hear and be told a better story about right. the body, mm -hmm. about sexuality, about closeness, uh, and the longing uh, that we, we humans have. Mm. So uh, there's a different, it's more brutal. It's more brutal. Okay. Yeah. I say sometimes I work in the shadow of death. Wow, wow. That's where I work. Wow. And I have to leave there and I have to come back. Uh, but it's it's dark. Wow. Yeah. If I may ask, why death? It's a strong word, yeah. but we want some insight into that. There's yeah. no hope. Mm. The only hope is 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 you're like the human or the the teenager is just left alone. There's there's nobody there to help you. And when you bring in light, um, when you bring in Christ, when you bring in hope. Mm -hmm. uh, kind of death loses its grip. Right, right. Yeah, it's a powerful word. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And um, so what sort of people do you encounter in your job? Is it, um, is it basically um, faith that is driving them to seek help? Or do you also see people who are not necessarily coming from a Christian uh, background who are also somewhat convicted about pornography being wrong for them? Yeah, it's a good question. Mostly, uh, I meet people with a Christian faith mm -hmm. uh, because the issue is so big. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, you know, I'm a Christian. I work in, in churches and organizations. Yes. Um, but I do, I do, I do meet people uh, without a Christian faith, and um, I enjoy that because I can start with telling them a beautiful story uh, of their worth, mm -hmm. uh, that they are loved, mm -hmm. desired, and created by a God who's mm -hmm. good. Sweet. And that kind of opens up a whole new world. <laughs> uh, so I hope in my future work, I meet more people uh, that live outside our, our Christian community. Right. Yeah, right. I do. <laughs> so good. And if I had to ask you, what would be your top two tips in helping men and women come out of pornography addiction? Uh, it's, uh, it's a process. Uh, talk about it. Put words to it. Because uh, shame doesn't like to be put words on. And that kind of loses its grip. Mm -hmm. um, be accountable. Um, find somebody that you can be accountable to. Um, somebody you trust. Mm -hmm. Not an accuser, but mm -hmm. somebody you trust. Yeah. Uh, that you, you're, you can be open. Uh, I think that would be my, my two top tips. Put words to it and be accountable to somebody. So good. And Alexis, what happens when somebody has been in a position where they have trusted somebody and that person didn't do a very good job with uh, protecting their confidentiality? Have you seen some of these scenarios and how do you support people who have been hurt in this way? That's a vulnerable question. It, it's you know, destruction and disappointment uh, from, from Christian leaders is a big issue in the field I work with, wow. uh, sexuality. Mm -hmm. um, and we kind of have to go to the, to the very center of, of being human and being loved by a God that is good. Because mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. there is hope. Mm -hmm. uh, we can't put our hope uh, in other people. Because mm -hmm. our hope is higher, right. um, and this is this is hard. This is difficult if 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 somebody experiences that. Um, but don't lose hope. Amen. Don't lose hope. Yeah. Because uh, we we are created mm -hmm. 
uh, as men and women to be barriers or carriers of God's image. Mm -hmm. And that's a massive, that's, that's a massive issue. Uh, and we have to stretch towards that. Mm. Yeah. Um, from your experience uh, with Christian leaders, people who are in ministry, people who are expected to kind of have higher standards of mm. Christian living, um, do you think that many in leadership are secretly struggling? Uh, perhaps if they're men, they wouldn't speak to their wives because they feel too vulnerable. Can you tell us a little bit about the reality behind the scenes at, from your experience? Yeah. Well, I know. Yeah. <laughs> I know this for a fact because mm. uh, they speak to me. Um, and I encourage them to, to go deeper into their issues, right. uh, into their longings. Uh, I encourage them to, uh, to seek uh, therapy, uh, help, okay. Okay. Uh, and kind of widen up their, their issues. Why, why do you still struggle with this? Because mm -hmm. uh, there's nothing I can tell you that you don't know. Right. And that's a big issue. Mm. Uh, and the consequence of... Uh, of getting exposed uh, with unfaithfulness, uh, which which this is, mm -hmm. you know, is enormous. Yeah. Uh, it's extremely shame shame uh, driven. Uh, this whole behavior. Yes. So uh, I I do know that for a fact, and the Barna report on pornography uh, tells us this uh, from stats from the USA, and I don't think we're any different in uh, in Europe. Uh, so we, we need to find a language, we need to find uh, groups, support. Uh, we need to find safe environments where we can be open, uh, where we can live transparent. Uh, I need to live transparent uh, in my life because, you know, I experience triggers, uh, things. I need to have boundaries um, because uh, the love I have for my wife, my wife, uh, it endures in, in, in truth. Yes. So if we don't live in truth, mm -hmm. something's right. going to happen. That's right. And so um, do you find that in, in the context of married couples, when marital duties are not being fulfilled, mm -hmm. uh, uh, perhaps the way they ought to be fulfilled, do you find that pornography becomes uh, more of a temptation for these uh, men or women? Mm -hmm. And yeah, what, what, what could you speak into that for you us? Know, it's, it's the painkiller uh, for something you long for. But what I often talk about when I have these conversations is, can we, can we plow deeper into what we are? Because yeah. sex isn't the fix for life. <laughs> I, I don't believe that. Right. It's yeah. not the meaning of life. Okay. Uh, it's a pointer to a bigger purpose of what we are as men and women, mm -hmm. but it, it doesn't fix us. Uh, it doesn't fulfill us. Mm -hmm. uh, there's something deeper. So uh, when I have these conversations, which I have, uh, not very often, but I have them, uh, I try to plow deeper. What, what are you searching for? Mm -hmm. What are your deep longings? Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. is, is sex going to answer that? Yeah. Uh, but sex would be the painkiller. Right. So, so you know, it's to describe yeah. It. <laughs> and what message would you bring to trainees lastly at IFTCC Learning who desire to help uh, many in the area of sexuality and gender? Oh, that's great. Yeah. We need to tell a better story that's more, that, that, that is more attractive, mm -hmm. um, that's more honest, um, that's more in, in the area of what we are created for as men and women. Yeah. Um, what makes me a man? Uh, what makes you a woman? Uh, and we, we need to go back to creation and see what happened there. Because uh, that, was, that was beautiful. Uh, when the man uh, expressed a longing and, uh, and the God Almighty, he created the crown jewel of the creation, the woman, mm. uh, to answer this deep, deep longing yes. in the man. Mm -hmm. And uh, not only sexual, uh, there's something deeper. Mm -hmm. And there's so many areas that we can talk about when we, uh, when we talk about our differences as men and women. But 
I think there's so many answers already in creation, and we're not even halfway there. Wow. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So you're taking us back to the Genesis account. Yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's wonderful. Thank you. This was so insightful. And we look forward to hear about this better story during uh, your presentation yeah. uh, this year as well at the IFTCC conference. So thank you, Alex. Thank you. <laughs>